This is a special presentation of CBS News Colorado, Girls and Science, a community conversation. Well, welcome to our community conversation on Girls in Science. I'm Nikelia White with our Girls of Girls Inc. and our mentors here with us. So we want to start with Stephanie, who is a 10th grader. Stephanie, you are looking at being an engineer. That's a wonder. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, I'm looking at electrical and mechanical engineering with a side degree in business. That's phenomenal. And then um, Salute, you're in 10th grade. And we know biology is a big draw for you. Uh, yes, I want to become a medical doctor or a researcher or a biologist. That's incredible. We want to meet our mentors as well. We'll start with Dominique Alhambra. She is the Anthropology Collections Manager at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. Dr. April Hill, a professor of chemistry and the director of criminalistics at MSU Denver. And Morgan Stein, the facilities engineering advisor for Chevron Rockies Business Unit. So we're going to jump right in. So salute. We know you have a question for Dominique over here. Uh, yes. So my question was, why is anthropology important and how does it impact our world? Yeah, absolutely. So anthropology is the science of people and what makes us human. Culture and how we interact with the world, how we interact with each other in society and all about it can be about ancient cultures all the way to the present day. And that's what I love about the field is it is the science of what makes, what makes us human. Mm. And I think the reason it's important is because we are not, people are not all the same and we all carry different experiences and different, we live in different parts of the world and we lead different lives. And what I love about anthropology is that I get to study other cultures. And through that, I think that we can put ourselves in the shoes of other people and empathize with other life experiences. And that just builds better connections for living our lives. And that's why mm -hmm. anthropology, I think, is really important. We can tell how passionate you are about it, too. Thanks. Love it. Yes. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, so um, April, how about you? How does your uh, career impact us? And Morgan, we'll have you answer too, but we'll start with April. Well, I mean, I guess I like to say chemistry is everywhere. I mean, everything you eat, everything you drink, the air you breathe, it's all chemicals. Um, and so it really is involved in every single field. But I think um, the specific areas I teach and research in are analytical. And that comes into play in a lot of fields. It's where we test samples to say, what is in this and how much is there? If it's drinking water, is it safe to drink? Um, and so you know, that's one side of the coin for me. The other side is forensic chemistry, which is just chemistry applied to legal questions. So what's in this sample was um, an accelerant used to start this fire. Things that, that help us solve a crime and keep people safe. So that yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. I'm going to go to. I mean, energy is everywhere. So with as an as an energy and oil and gas engineer, you know, we've seen over the course of time that we end up needing more and more of it. Um, and we also need to do it better and better, cleaner and cleaner. Um, so it's very present, um, but it's also very important to involve the innovation in it, mm. um, to find new ways to mm. test new ways and make them safe and affordable for everybody, and that's one of the big things that I really love about working in energy is that I get to see it all happen. Yeah. Um, and I kind of know what's coming to you guys beforehand, yeah. <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, but it's, you know, it's something that we, we're going to need, we have to need it, so how do we do it better? Right. Is, is like one of my favorite things about my job. Mm -hmm. Love that. So Stephanie, we know you have a question for April as well. Uh, yeah, um, just a big question. Well, not really, but yeah. <laughs> How was working for NASA like for you? Um, it was amazing. <laughs> I mean, I went to graduate school wow. focused on forensic chemistry. I wanted to be a forensic scientist, but my dad had worked at the water treatment plant in my hometown, so water quality was interesting to me, and I just like fell into this project where they were doing water quality analysis for space flight. So we were working on little membranes that they could take up to the space station and just use a syringe and pass a sample of water through and they could tell by the color if it was safe to drink. And so to prove that that would work in zero G, we had to test it in zero G. So I got to fly 12 times on the Vomit Comet. I, I forget what it's actually called. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's a microgravity flight simulator. Um, and it was amazing. I mean, I, I, if you ever get the chance, if there's any possibility of doing research where you get to experience that, I think it's worth it. It was just such a cool. And I mean, now the stuff I worked on is part of ISS. So really exciting for me. <laughs> what was it like flying on the comet, too? Um, it was like your body doesn't understand zero G. So right. I was convinced the first time I felt it that the plane flipped over. And I had to look out the window, and I was like, um, <laughs> it, it was really strange. But yeah, it's, it's really fun, too. <laughs> Sounds so cool. Um, how about you, Morgan? Any unexpected experiences? Oh, plenty. <laughs> Always plenty. I say with, um, with Chevron, one of the biggest, mo the most unexpected, but probably one of the biggest benefits to my personal life as well as my career has been all of the places that I've been able to go with mm. Chevron. Um, all of the way Chevron, um, we, we move people around internally. Um, so you get new assignments doing different engineering aspects in company, in, in Chevron business units all over. Um, so I've gotten to not just see how energy engineering is applied in different you know, scientific ways, but also in different cultures hmm. um, and how we engage in different cultures and how kind of with the anthropology part, you know, how do you tailor what you're doing to be beneficial and how do you grow the culture around you? Um, I've been involved with uh, different STEM things and yeah, it's been very cool. Very, very cool and lots of great conversation here. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break when we return. Some questions about what inspired our mentors as we explore Girls in Science. We'll be right back. Welcome back everybody to our Girls in Science community conversation. We're here with Salute and Stephanie with Girls Inc. So uh, Salute, how did you get involved with Girls Inc? How did this all come about? Um, I actually first heard it from one of my friends who was also signing up for the program mm -hmm. around eighth grade and I'm really interested in STEM, specifically biology, mm -hmm. so I thought this would be a great opportunity to learn more about it and be with a bunch of other young people who are also interested. Yeah. And some of my favorite parts have been um, being able to do an externship last year with um, a software company called House Call Pro wow. and we were able to um, learn about software development and even create a prototype of an app that we wanted. Oh, so nice. I created like a fashion app that was kind of like Etsy so you could like pick your outfits and like all that fun stuff so yeah that I was like a that. really great experience too to just like learn from others in the professional world and even this interview as well as like such a great opportunity so mm -hmm. obviously you have a passion for fashion I love your outfit thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly. okay Stephanie and how did you get involved in Girls Inc? Um, I got involved at Girls Inc through a teacher she was my science my seventh grade science teacher yeah, um, she just, I was like, I, I really liked her class. We were learning about um, like elements. So she was like, well, there's this program and they're all about STEM, so you might like it. I signed up, I interviewed. Um, my first year was during the pandemic. So we did that online the first year, um, which honestly I feel like was great because it just showed that Eureka was um, accommodating the you and the needs that the girls need because they were able to provide those made packages that were delivered to you or that you could come and pick up so you would still be able to participate from the safety of your own home. Mm. Um, then um, the second year was right after the pandemic. We were wearing masks and social distancing. Mm -hmm. um, but it was great because there were still so many activities that we could connect with. Right. Um, so, and learn, of course. Um, and then last summer I did my externship because it's a five year program. The first two years are summer camps. The third and fourth year are externships. Mm -hmm. And then on the fifth one, you get a trip um, according to like what you're learning and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, last summer, I had an internship at Burns and McDonnell, um, which is an engineering consulting firm. And so it was just really amazing <laughs> for me because uh, I'm into engineering. So that just, before I did the interview, I knew I liked engineering. I just didn't know what exactly. Um, so Eureka and that externship really did help me narrow that down that um, field I was looking into. Refine your passion there. Yeah. And Stephanie, I know you have a question as well for Morgan. Uh, yeah, so when did you know you wanted to make your fascination for construction into something more? 
That's a hard one because in all honesty, I, I don't, well, I guess it was more of, like you just said, learning about what was available. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I had that passion. I was so interested. I could not help myself but build things around me. No, in, in, in you, <laughs> with using whatever I had around me, I was making something. And so it was kind of, uh, as I learned, um, my dad was involved and a couple of older, um, older women who were getting into science, getting into college and that kind of stuff. And I was learning what they were learning or what they were interested in. And it just kind of opened up my eyes to the ability um, and to, to what was present. Um, and so I kind of started learning more and more about what options were there um, and seeing kind of I was all over the board at the, at the beginning. <laughs> well, you know, you kind of got to look at the broad and then you kind of end up narrowing it down some. Um, but it was, it was definitely learning the op what the opportunities were would be kind of where I was like, yes, this is, this is what I care about. This is what I really like. Um, I got a lot better grades in school <laughs> in my engineering classes than in you know, the other classes. So it was kind of clear. Yeah. And Dominique, I saw you nodding too. How did you kind of refine your interests or what inspired you to pursue what you are doing? Yeah, um, I relate to a lot of what Morgan said when I started at university. I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And right, when you don't have a major selected, you can take all sorts of different courses. So I tried a little bit of everything and I ended up um, taking an archaeology class mm -hmm. and I thought oh my gosh it is so cool that mm -hmm. you can dig things and sites out of the ground and based on the scientific method infer what their lives might have been like mm -hmm. this is awesome and so I started volunteering for one of my uh, professors she had a laboratory where we were analyzing in near St. Louis um, that was a thousand years old. And so it was so cool to hold these pieces of pottery in my hands and know that someone made this with their hands and used it. And that's what ignited my passion of, I want to work with anthropology collections. Mm. So. And April, April too, what inspired you to get into? You know, um, Depends on the stage in life, because I sort of have, have I guess, changed my mind every so often. Um, what got me into forensics was the X-Files. I was obsessed. <laughs> my mom used so to like cool. take the remote away and make me go do something, because I would just, um, <laughs> but Dana Scully was like an absolute inspiration for me, and I'm not alone in that. There's the Scully effect that's documented that many, many women went into science because of her. Um, but when I was figuring out what I wanted to go to graduate school for, um, I actually thought I wanted to go for computational chemistry. So just as sort of a, maybe a bit of advice for you is I think it's just as important to figure out what you don't like as what you do. Because I was sure that computational chemistry, yep. it's where you, you tell the computer like, I want this reaction to happen and it's gonna happen like this. Tell me how much energy it's gonna take. Will it be easier if I add this? And I thought it sounded so fun and I thought it was really boring <laughs> when I actually did it. No offense to computational chemists. If that is your thing, that is wonderful, but it just wasn't mine. Um, but I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't done a summer research project in it. And so, yeah, I think don't, don't be afraid if you try something and you, you decide it's not for you. That's, that's still learning something and narrowing down what is for you, so. I didn't know the Scully effect was a thing actually too. Yeah. That is yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm living it. Well, we are gonna take another break here and we'll turn our conversation to continuing to learn here on Girls in Science. We'll be right back. So we still have a few more minutes of our Girls in Science community conversation. Salute, you want to talk with April about innovation too. Uh, yeah, so um, obviously you've hit so many milestones in your career and you've done so much. So throughout your journey, I was wondering, how do you receive negative comments or like rude comments and how do you manage that? And what would you recommend to young people out there who are trying to achieve these like big goals but are constantly maybe being bogged down by friends or outside world? So how would you recommend mm. to deal with that and move forward? Great question. Yeah, that's a really good question. And it's, um, 
it's something everyone has to face. I mean, even now, I'll, I'll be asked to do something like this and think, oh my gosh, am I qualified to be a mentor <laughs> for somebody? I don't, I don't think so. Did they really mean to ask me? Um, and so that's imposter syndrome, and, and that's a pretty well-known effect. And it does affect people with intersectional identities. So women, women of color, um, you know, people with gender identities that, that aren't considered mainstream, right? All of those things can have you um, questioning if you belong because maybe you don't see people like you in the field that you want. Mm. Um, I work a lot with blind students and there is a lot of stigma about blind students going into chemistry. And so I think um, the way I approach it is just to make sure that you aren't letting someone else limit you, but be realistic with yourself. You know, if, if something isn't for you, if you struggle a lot and you don't enjoy the struggle, Maybe it's not for you, but mm -hmm. if you're struggling, but you like it and you care and you want to learn, then struggling doesn't mean you're not cut out for that. It just means that you have to figure out a way that works for you. Um, and the only other thing I'll add is I, I realized at some point that I have to think of myself as a person. And so if I had a friend who made the mistakes that I've made, or if I had a friend who heard the comments that I've heard, you know, you wear too much makeup, you look too girly, you don't look like a scientist, mm. um, I just think, you know, what would I tell my friend? And I would say, you know, don't let someone else define you. So, mm -hmm. you know, and be as kind to yourself if you make mistakes as you would be to someone else. Be forgiving, you know? That is so important. Yeah. So, so important. Okay, how about you, Dominique and Morgan, uh, dealing with negative or rude comments? What's your advice on that? Really quickly here, too. For sure. For me, especially, having worked in um, academia in other museums as well you can deal with a lot of gatekeeping and rejection and i think for me it's knowing my worth and my value and what i bring to the table and it's not for them to decide well you just fit in this box mm -hmm. and i know that i have a meaningful contribution to make and to keep speaking up so, um, and I agree with um, April that it, it's also being kind to yourself because I, I'm, my, I'm my hardest critic and sometimes I can internalize the criticism of others and I have, for me personally, I have to remind myself, hey, like I'm, I'm doing the best I can and I'm doing good work and it's, it's good for me to remind myself of that. I would say that it's what you guys said spot on. I, you know, what someone else's thoughts are on how you are doing, take it, see what, it, you know, take it as like a, okay, that's an interesting comment. If it has no merit, it has no merit. You just mm -hmm. keep going. Um, sometimes I get feedback that I don't really agree with. Chevron's a very feedback rich culture and I appreciate it. But it does, you know, that was a one-off situation or, or something like that. And you, you, just, you learn from it as much as you can. Take what you can from it. It's not always what the comment was is what you learn. Sometimes you learn how to deal with those negative comments. And you keep going with what you are passionate about. And it'll show. Mm -hmm. How about you, April? What have you continued to learn along the way? You know, I'm really lucky that uh, I get to work with students. And so analytical chemistry is, is it plays a role in lots of fields. So, you know, for biology, if we have students, I had a student who was interested in nicotine and how it affects the body. And so he was working on using a fancy instrument called an LCMS that uh, we can mm -hmm. sample saliva and see how much nicotine is there. And he was trying to correlate that with psychology studies. Um, and so I feel like anybody who wants to do that kind of work can come to me or, or anyone in the chemistry department and say, I need help, you know, doing the chemistry part of this. And then we get to help them and we get to learn about what they're doing. And so um, it's just really fun for me to have people come with ideas, like working with the Science Museum to do mm -hmm. residue of, of Mayan pottery to try to brew a Mayan beer. Um, that's not something I ever thought I would get to do. And it just, literally a student came to me and wanted to do it. And so I think I continue to learn from my students all the time. So I love that. <laughs> Dominique too, what have you learned along the journey? What I've learned along the journey is, it's interesting because I think when I was younger, I was always questioning, am I doing the right thing? Is, should I make this choice? Should I apply for this job? Should I 
quit and go do something else that uh, and do something different mm. and and I think it was learning to I guess trust myself and and, and continue to persevere and and it's also that you don't have to you, you don't take this journey alone. There's mm. so many mentors out there and and for me also the support of my family was huge and it's reaching out to the people who care for you, who support you and say, yes, you can do this and they're your cheering squad <laughs> and it's so great to have a cheering squad. So um, yeah, I like for me it's just as much of a pro pro professional journey a personal journey as a professional journey. You have to have that community around you, just rallying around you and cheering you on. Yeah. So, so, so important. All right, well, this has been a really wonderful and enlightening conversation. Salute and Stephanie, thank you for those great questions. We're so grateful, we appreciate it. And Dominique, April, and Morgan, thank you so much for sharing with us. So, so wonderful. And remember, you can explore Girls in Science all month online and streaming at cbscolorado.com.